guys, this is Matt here from morecompleteeffects.com. Got a new tutorial for you this week. Uh, we're going to go over some advanced ideas in 2.5D. Uh, some different ways to separate layers and whatnot. Uh, before I get going forward, I'd like to send a shout out to my boy Day with Wine. He's nice enough to uh, loan me his production tracks for the beginning of my tutorials and I use it on my reel as well. So let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, what 2.5D is and we've all seen the technique. I'm going to open these two comps from a project uh, documentary I was working on. 2.5D is basically just taking a still photograph, separating it into layers, and the 2.5D idea comes from, you know, that it's not truly 3D and that if I go to this custom view, and let me back it up a little bit, you'll see that, you know, everything is just split into its layers and it has depth in 3D, but each layer in itself has no depth. And as I go to the side here, you can see, you know, there's no depth in Z. They can be spaced in Z, but they have no true depth. So this is what the idea of the 2.5D comes from. It's a technique we're seeing a lot these days. I'll see it on Dateline. I'll see it on, uh, what's it, 60 Minutes. You see it in documentaries all the time. It's pretty common technique, and I think becoming the standard for how stills are treated in motion pictures. Well, what I'm going to do today is cover some more complex situations when you get to 2.5D and we're going to cover a technique that I used in a documentary called West Siders. It was a surf documentary and there was, gosh, I can't even begin to think about how many stills there were of surfers in the surf documentary and we wanted to bring some depth to it but what you're going to run into is, you know, it, what where do you split a photograph like this up? It's not a clear defined line. It's easy when it's people like we have with the soldiers here. I, you know, simply cut this front soldier out. You can see right here, I added a little smoke layer in front of them to give it some mood, I guess. You can see it sort of playing here in our custom view. And I cut him out and you can see back here where I cut him out and filled in the wall and filled out the ground where he was so that when we go to this active camera, I did all that in Photoshop, brought it in, and then you can see how he's separated from the layers behind him, and it gives us a nice look. So the question then becomes, you know, with a photograph like this where it's pretty complicated, it's not, it's not a square building or a car or something easily defined that you can simply just take in a Photoshop, cut out, paint, paint it back in, you know. How are you going to bring depth to a photo like this? There's not too many layers in it inherently. So, real quick, I'm not using photos from the documentary because I just didn't want to go through getting rights to all that and everything. So what I did do is I found some photos that you can use if you want to follow along on publicdomainpictures.net. I simply searched for the word surfer and I got, you know, what is that, maybe 20 photographs of surfers that you can use and I think the one I'm working on right now is called right here with my mouse surfer smashes the curl so if you need to get some images to follow along there you go with that out of the way the question here is you know how can I bring depth and I think that in two and a half D things look the best if you have three layers you have a background layer you have a medium layer um, medium ground if you will and then a foreground layer and in this case, I think the surfer would make the best medium layer. You can see as we come in on him like this, he's definitely been separated from the background. You can see the shift between him and the background. It's called a parallax shift. When you see a change between the foreground and the background of a layer, it's what makes, you know, 3D pictures work when you go to the movies. And so what I wanted to do was add splashes coming toward the camera. And the best way to do that is to just extract them simply out of this photo and in fact I did cheat a little bit and would use other photos and extract the splashes out of those but it be, you can't even imagine how tedious it would be to come in here and cut out the splash I mean I would there's no point in my life which I've ever had or will have the patience for that so I'm gonna take this same f image that I of the surfer that I used and bring it in in a 2D mode just lay it on top of everything because it's really all we're going to deal with right now I'm going to turn off the rest of the layers and I'm going to take my pen tool up here 
and draw a mask and just I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this I'm gonna extract the part of the wave that I want to use for my foreground splashes and it's really not an exact art by any means the only important thing I would say is that you want to avoid the edges because you don't want to have you know square flat parts of your splash and it's a little bit hard to explain until you've seen how it works and then I think once you see how it works you'd have a better idea of how to uh, you know sort of judge how the type of masks you would want to draw but what this is going to be is this is going to be my splash luma layer and what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate that I'm actually going to take this word luma out because I just want a splash layer as well with no mask I'm going to delete the mask so what I have here is if I solo them one at a time I have a layer that's my color information and then a layer that's going to be my luma information and what I'm going to do is on the splash luma let me take this number two off of it so we don't get confused on the splash luma layer I'm going to go ahead and add the effect color correction hue and saturation I'm going to completely let me pull this so you can see what's going on I'm going to completely desaturate this layer so we're dealing with black and white then I'm also going to right click color correction levels crush my blacks in so that I'm only really showing the white parts of the splash if you will and then I'm going to take the splash layer underneath under my track mat and I'm going to use that luma that layer that I made as the luma mat for my splash and if we actually it's hard to tell against black I'm going to change my composition settings oops I'm going to change my composition background color rather from black to red so we can see what's going on and you can see we've pulled out the splash information just the part of the splash that we want oh, I can't believe we just accidentally did that pulled out the part of the splash that we wanted via using this as our luma mat this black and white layer and if we go back in here to this black and white layer and we tweak our levels you can see we control what we do and don't pull out of the splash and what we mainly want is the white chunky parts so the thing I'm gonna do is press M for mask that brings up actually press F for feather on any layer with a any layer with a mask and F brings up your feather and I'm just gonna feather this so it's not so hard outlined and you can see we've extracted a splash that feather may be a bit much but we won't really know till we have it in there what I'm going to do is go ahead and pre-comp the splash and the splash luma that's selecting both hitting Apple shift C or control shift C on the PC I'm gonna call it splash all and before I hit OK notice that there's still these aren't 3d layers they're 2d layers at this point so I'm gonna say OK and then I'm gonna make the pre-comp 3D and if we go back to having all of our layers on now I have this 3D splash that I've extracted from my photo that I can move around and do what I will with and what I'm gonna do is just scale it up a little bit press P for position I wanna you can see we want to bring it forward in Z and if our surfers are mid-ground at minus 125 so let's make this maybe minus 175 scale it down a little bit rotate it a little bit and Z you can see we've already sort of have some foreground splashes in there you can see this separation that's going on and you'd be surprised you can what you can get away with I'm gonna duplicate this again and maybe make this minus 150 so it's a little bit farther back I'm gonna scale it differently You'd be surprised what you can get away with in terms of using the same extracted piece of, you know, splash over and over and over. Because they're so, because waves are so random and there's so many little pieces to it, if you just put it over a different part, you'll find that you just really, no one's ever going to know that you're using the same splash over and over. And 
so let's say that we want I'm gonna put this one over here the other thing you can do is mess with your transfer modes I never found this working too well but you can screen it if you want which sort of lets you see through it a little bit if you will here's a screened version and we're already starting to get some depth with those waves in the foreground and let's go ahead and go I'm gonna do this one sort of rapidly I'm gonna bring this in one more time solo this I'm going to do the same technique again, but let's say we want to pull out maybe some of these kind of splashes that are coming off the surfboard. So, and really it can be this fast and this simple. It's as complicated as you want to make it. Kind of like Bob Ross stuff. Happy little trees. So, I can just actually open this composition, copy my effects, my hue and saturation and levels. I'm going to go ahead and paste them on here. Splash Luma. I'm going to duplicate that. Delete this mask. Press E for effects. Delete the effects. Make this the Luma mat. And now I have the coming off the surfboard splash. I may need to tweak the levels here a little bit. And I will see what that does first. I'm going to pre comp these together. Splash all two. Make that a 3D layer now. And I should have some, oops, should have some spray to come off a surfboard that we can move in the foreground. I'm going to flip this horizontally and I'm going to screen this layer because you can see it's a little bit more tan than the other. So there we go. Let's move its position a little bit toward the camera. Again, we need to look at where our surfer is. He's at negative 125, so maybe I'll put this at negative 145. Not too crazy. And now if I press Apple Shift H or Control Shift H to hide all my guides, we can really get a true sense of what this photo is doing. And I'm going to go ahead and render that. And there we go. I mean, you could tweak this till the cows come home, but you can see how we've really added some depth to this photo. And some of the spray up here in the corner looks really cool. Our surfer looks separate off the background. We could always make our camera wider. We can always separate the layers even more if it's not enough separation for us. But one thing I will suggest is when you're doing this, the best kind of moves are the moves that push in and twirl in and not so much orbiting as soon as you begin to try and orbit things you sort of you know the gimmick sort of shows through you sort of see the magic trick so I'd recommend mainly zooming in and rotating although I was able to get away with some orbits and this with the splash gimmick in the documentary uh, some of the shots I did do for the documentary you can see on my rare on my reel if you'd like and I believe that of links available on creative cow so I guess that's all for now until next time this is Matt from morecompleteeffects.com and creativecow.net thanks guys